Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got some awesome insights from the community, along with an update from the Power BI team. Also, I wanted to just give you a heads up that next Sunday morning, at least morning for me, I'm going to be doing a live stream on how I actually build out the roundup. So I'm actually going to be going through picking out items for the following week's roundup. I'd love for you to join me, help me build that out and just see what my process is. All right, enough of that. Let's dig in to the roundup. Yo, Raviv's got a blog post looking at how you can actually pull data from a PDF. In this case, he's looking at the WHO's data for COVID related items. But what I love about this is first off, I don't know that a lot of people know that you can actually get this out of PDFs. Let me know in the comments below with hashtag PDF if you actually knew you could do this. And he walks through how, how to actually do this with that PDF from the WHO to extract that data, load it into your data model, and then build, build visualizations off of it. It's an interesting concept and I actually haven't run across a personal situation where I actually needed to do this. But it's nice that there's an example out there that everyone can go through if they want to give this a try and just see how it works. There are some gotchas though. So if you're working with other PDFs, just know that not every PDF is treated equally and your mileage may vary depending on how that PDF is laid out. So give it a try, see what you think and let me know. We're going to talk about the July 2020 Power BI desktop release a little bit later. But in this blog post, Marco Russo looks at how to actually build calculation groups now with Power BI Desktop. So it's not actually available in Power BI Desktop directly, but he walks you through how you can actually do that with one of the cool features that came out with the July 2020 update. This does require that you have the preview option selected, which is the enhanced data set schema that is required for this to actually work. But Marco walks you through all the steps to actually do this with Tabular Editor and Power BI Desktop. So you'll need two tools to do this. He's also got an associated video along with it. You'll see a link up above related to that if you want to go check it out. But this is just a great option to now have available with Power BI Desktop. I know folks that were doing this over the XMLA endpoint. It was not impossible, but it was painful, I guess. And now you can just do it directly inside of Power BI Desktop, which is awesome. Laura Graham Brown's got a blog post. She's actually got a series looking at slicers in general. This specific blog post is looking at sync slicers and sync slicers are a really powerful option that you can use inside of Power BI Desktop to actually create slicers that span pages inside of Power BI. Patrick also did a video where he looked at using sync slicers to actually control what's in a report page tooltip so that you can build out certain items and text inside of that tooltip, which was pretty cool. Laura's also got a video going along with this where she walks through sync slicers. So if this is something that you haven't experienced or you're not quite sure how to use sync slicers, check out this blog post and video. She's got you covered. We are coming up on five years of Power BI. It's actually coming up on Friday, July 24th, but the Power BI team has announced that they're going to do a thank you for five years event on Thursday, July 23rd to try and accommodate for time zones and whatnot. Power BI has certainly come a long way and it has been a journey that a lot of you have been a part of. And so the team just wants to say thank you to you and try and help just bring everyone together for an event in these times that we have. It will be a live event that you can participate in and it looks like it's going to be hosted inside of a community page. So community.powerbi.com. There's a link inside the blog post. And you'll be able to participate with inside of the community site and then I'm, um, you know, Twitter also. And it looks like they're going to be doing some shirt giveaways as well. So think about what you've done with Power BI over the last five years and think about how you want to share that story coming up with this live event. This live event will be from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. So mark your calendar. So that's going to be 12 p.m. noon central time for me. And Patrick and I will be doing a live stream on the Guy in a Cube channel at 4.30 p.m. Central, so 2.30 p.m. Pacific and 5.30 p.m. Eastern, just to continue that conversation and hear stories about what folks have done with Power BI over the last five years, or even before that, if you go back that far. So definitely tune in to the Microsoft event on Thursday, and then come join us over on the Guy in a Cube channel to continue that conversation. 
We got the July 2020 Power BI desktop update. And as with all things, there were some cool items inside of it. There were some reporting updates. So we got Gradient Legends and there were some updates to the Q&A visual as well. We also got the preview of Azure Maps and that also includes some items along with it. So definitely check that out and see what you think. The Azure Maps is a preview item, so you may need to enable that from the preview settings. There were also a bunch of Excel financial functions that are now available in DAX. I think I read that there was 49 of them. So I wanna hear from all you Excel folks. Does that excite you? Is that awesome? Let me know. The other big thing in this desktop update is the ability to launch external tools from Power BI Desktop directly. So this ties back to Marco's blog post of how to create calculation groups. The three highlighted tools as part of this are Tabular Editor, DAX Studio, and ALM Toolkit, but you can build your own external tool and get it into the toolbar. So that's pretty cool. Make sure that you've updated to the latest version of Power BI Desktop. If you get it from the Microsoft Store, it will update automatically. Otherwise, you will need to go get the MSI and install the actual update. I mentioned already the external tools and Jason Himmelstein's got a blog post talking about well, what if you don't see the external tools? What do you do? And he walks through how to actually go get those set up. And this is a nice compliment to the video that I did last week talking about the same thing. So, but if you want it in a blog form, here you go. Jason's got you covered. He's going to walk you through those items. What I also love about this blog is as he's walking through these items, he calls out a few gotchas as well. So that's really beneficial for just to help you understand how this is all going to work. Check out the blog post down below. Links for everything I mentioned in this roundup are also down below, including some bonus items. So go check it out. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item in this week's roundup? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.